everybody wants to judge themselves through the lens of a moment. They want to be cool right now, today. And they're asking themselves, what's the least I need to do to feel cool? What's the least I need to do to be successful? But once I stopped asking that question and I started thinking about really who I could become and really harnessing the human ability to adapt, what people need to understand, humans have become the apex predator, not by being the strongest, not even by being the most intelligent, but rather by being the most adaptive to change. And when you realize all of us are born with nothing, no skills, no knowledge, nothing. We're a lump of flesh that can hardly hold our own head up. We can't take care of ourselves. We shit in our own pants. And our job, our job isn't to be great today. Our job is to build ourselves brick by brick. And that is what separates the truly greats from everyone else. They're willing to put in that hard work. They're willing to reframe the question from what's the least I can do to what's the most I can bear. And when you're looking at yourself on that long timeline, when you're saying, what can I accomplish over the next 10 years? What is the amount of suffering and backbreaking work that I'm willing to put in and endure in order to become something extraordinary? That's the key is you actually have to perform it's not about convincing someone else that you're cool or looking good on paper. It's about actually delivering a result. It's about actually becoming capable of the extraordinary. But you have to understand the way the mechanisms, the very anatomy of the human works. And it works by building things up brick by brick. It works by starting out terrible at something, incapable of something, and being willing to put in the work to grind it out to become that. And when people can move beyond the words, when they can move beyond that bullshit, trite stuff that people say, when they can transcend that and see what it means to actually put in work, to actually get good at something, to really think about improvement. Everybody just wants to see this shit come back to them. They want the fucking heavy weight of the ring. They want the jewels. They want the riches. They want the house, the cars. But fuck all of that. Want the performance. Want to be great. Want to look at yourself and believe in who you've become. And even more importantly, if there's no one around to look, if there's no one around to impress, do I still push? And if at that point I'm still willing to push, if at that point in that circumstance I still want to be something and I still want to wring the potential out of myself and I want to actualize that potential, I want to actuate it, I want to actually do something with it even when nobody's watching, then I'll be proud of myself. Then I know I'll accomplish something because that's real. That's beyond the bullshit and that's where people have to get if you really want to do something. Stop worrying about the echo and start worrying about the shout. Believe in who you can become tomorrow and let every day until the day you drop be about wringing that potential out of yourself. Be about building something and becoming something brick by brick. Putting in that day-to-day -day work of building something, of becoming capable of something today that you weren't capable of yesterday, of asking yourself how far you can go, of becoming obsessed with that process and no longer thinking about the end. And when you understand the difference between no longer focusing on being a champion and instead of delivering a championship performance, everything will change. Because it's the people who build themselves into someone who can give a championship performance that win. Certainly the most destructive vice, if you like, that a person can have, more than pride, is self-pity. I think self-pity is the worst possible emotion anyone can have, and the most destructive. It destroys everything around it except itself. Self-pity will destroy relationships, it'll destroy anything that's good, it will fulfill all the prophecies it makes and leave only itself. Thank you.
It's so simple to imagine that one is hard done by and that things are unfair and that one is underappreciated, that if only one had had a chance at this, if only one had had a chance at that, things would have gone better, you would be happier if only this, that one is unlucky, all those things. And some of them may well even be true, but to pity oneself as a result of them is to do oneself an enormous disservice. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and you will be happy. You don't have to scratch very far beneath the surface of most people's lives before you find something truly tragic. The only way that change is going to take place is if you, you see the evidence of the collapse right in front of you. I think the challenge is, is that people have to wake up. And the question is, how uncomfortable do you have to become? And as I've said in the past, you know, you don't try to fix this. We just figure out a way to create something better. You don't have till you're necessarily 65, 75, 85, and none of us know when that moment's going to come. And I believe we don't necessarily have time. All we have to make an impact is this moment right now. Tomorrow is not some guarantee that we have. It's not a right that we have, it's a privilege. Repatterning. It's a process of rewiring. It's a process of reconditioning. It's a process of self-reflection and awareness and changing those beliefs. When you begin to realize then, well, I can't respond to the same conditions in my life with the same emotions and the same thoughts, because if I believe that the way I feel and the way I think creates reality, if I'm reacting to the same thoughts and feelings equal to the conditions in my life in the same way, then I keep reaffirming the same life. The attachment and the identification of this conditioned sense of self that we have learned to be based on our past, based on our experiences, based on our childhood. We identify with these thought forms and we identify with these belief systems and then we hold tightly onto this sense of identification as a sense of me is who you are, who you really are. Sometimes when you find your purpose, the real challenges just begin. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in a day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways, and it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. You gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. Life begins to throw these challenges and tests. Life's way of rewarding you is life believing in you. It knows, okay, you're on this path, so you must be ready. And so to me, the challenges and the hardships and the ups and the downs and the divorce and the breakups and the difficulties are just life's way of preparing your soul. We're gonna adapt and overcome now. power to do whatever it is you say you're going to do, to live with personal integrity. That is a superpower. Most people, they major in minor things. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter. You look at your body, where you're starting, without that, everything else is out the door. You don't want to be richest man in the graveyard. That's not going to do it. If there is energy, if there's vitality, if there's strength, it's going to show up in your relationship. It's going to show up in your business, show up in your life. That's it. You got to master. You can't dabble. It's too important. Emotions are everything. I mean, you got 
a ton of money, you got everybody loves you, and your primary emotions are pissed off and frustrated, then your life's pissed off and frustrated. It doesn't matter if you got a billion dollars or a million people loving you, your life is not great. Relationships, intimate relationships especially. It's where the most juice in life comes from, it's where the most pain comes from most people. It's worth mastering instead of dabbling. You know, really looking at what are you gonna do with your time? and mastering your time. Instead of having a checklist, you cross it all off, you can mistake movement for achievement. I, I wanna squeeze out of that time what matters, that creates value for me and for everyone I care about and love. We have the world's information at our fingertips. We don't have the excuse of not knowing what to do anymore. Who doesn't know basically how to lose weight? Who doesn't know that if you want to have better relationships with people, you have to be fully present with them? Who doesn't know that if you want to do better at your job, you have to do the work, especially the hard stuff that other people don't want to do? We know these things. So there's no excuse anymore to say, well, I just didn't know how. Most people focus on being significant. We live in a Facebook world where people fake their life, put new filters, make it look different than it really is, tell stories that, you know, are totally full of it to make themselves look good. Because we live in this kind of false world where significance is more important than love, and it separates us. And the other one that we see most often is certain. People want to be certain before they can do something. We're lacking the ability to avoid distraction. Getting ahead in life is not just about doing the right, right things. It's about avoiding not doing the wrong things. That the root cause of why we become distracted is because we feel these internal triggers, these uncomfortable emotional states that we seek to escape. Well, in the psychological realm, everyone's going to measure themselves differently because everyone values things differently. Mm -hmm. Some people value success or significance. Some people value love more. Some value just basic levels of certainty. We all have a need for certainty, that we can avoid pain and we can have some pleasure, some comfort. We all need uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We need variety or we feel dead inside. If you're totally certain, you're bored. If you have total variety, you really freak out. And it's not a balance, it's learning which of these you need more as a person. Everyone's developed a different set of values in that area. The need for significance, to feel unique, special, important, the need to feel loved, the need to grow, and the need to contribute. I turn my whole life around. What would happen if all of a sudden I went and learned some things that could change it all? In most people's lives, they fail primarily because they don't open up the possibility, so they never take the actions that could change their life. And because I asked, how can I turn my life around? You know, what can I do to make things work? I started getting new answers. You know, they say, ask and you shall receive. most important thing in business is honesty, integrity, hard work, family, never forgetting where we came from. So you are what you are in this world. It's either one or two things. Either you're somebody, or you're nobody. Small minds discuss other people. Good minds discuss events, great minds discuss ideas. There is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. 40 years ago, March 27th, 1975, it was 40 years ago, I was flunking out of college. I had a 1.7 grade point average. I was sitting in my mother's beauty parlor and I'm looking in the mirror, and I see behind me this woman under the dryer. She said, somebody give me a pen. Give me a pencil. I have a prophecy. March 27, 1975, she said, boy, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. 
But that's not the most important thing, the success that I had. The most important thing is that what she taught me and what she told me that day has stayed with me since. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. You have these dreams. Dreams without goals remain dreams. Dreams without goals, yearly goals, life goals, daily goals, monthly goals, hourly goals, minute by minute goals. Dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. You will fail at some point in your life, accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. Every day you have to plan. Plan to fail. We fail to plan. Hard work works. And in this text, tweet, twerk world that you've grown up in, remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. So never give up. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. I ain't got to like you. Mr. Rand don't give me my money. Come pay day cause he like me. He give it to me cause he owe me. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. Now don't you go through life worrying about whether somebody like you or not. You best be making sure they're doing right by you. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. And anything you want, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. Every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. We gave meanings to the experiences of our life, or other people gave meanings to the experiences that we were having. What you believe will dictate your thoughts on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And then that emotion then dictates what actions you do or do not take. And they're always aligned, right? Your beliefs dictate your thoughts, dictate your emotions, dictate your actions, which produce your results. And your results, when you look at them, then just reinforce the original belief. That which we tend to pay attention to is aligned with what we believe, and so that's all we get. So if you want you know, more happiness, if you want more wealth, if you want deeper relationships, if you wanna have more joy, you wanna have more fun, you wanna achieve your full potential and really make an impact in the world, then what's really important is to get clear on what that could look like for you and to make sure that what you believe is congruent with that outcome. Because if what you believe is not congruent with that outcome, just neurophysiologically, you're working against yourself. Clarity is intimately connected to imagination. So as we're getting clear on something, we're beginning to see what that thing is that we're getting more clarity on. If you're willing to invest time in getting clear around something or imagining, you build neural networks that represent the memory of an experience that has not happened yet. 
step away from that fear and begin to see that there's wonder and beauty and opportunity all around. It begins to activate the part of your brain that's full of imagination, creativity, and, and beauty. We are meaning machines. We not only give meaning to meaningless things, we make meaningful things meaningless. But the moment your mind is under the law of generosity, growth, development, unfolding, giving, compassion, kindness, radiance. The moment that that happens, you come under the right use of the law. The moment you realize you're here to give as something, then all thoughts of not enoughness and lack, limitation, fear, doubt, worry, and separation begin to dissolve in your premise every single day of your life is I am and I've got it all. I am, I've got it all. Your destiny begins to unfold because you're not here to get from the world. You're not here to get, you are here to let and walk in that awareness even before it manifests even before you can see it. All of life is for you. But you gotta find a story that's gonna empower you to act. Complexity is the enemy of execution. The more complex you make it, the less likely you're going to execute. If you're creative enough, can you find the answer, yes or no? If you're determined enough, can you find the breakthrough, yes or no? If you're passionate, loving enough, can you get someone to help you, yes or no? If there's no way that you're committed, can you find the money, even if you don't have it, yes or no? So I said creativity, decisiveness, passion, honesty, sincerity, love, these are the ultimate human resources. And when you engage these resources, you can get any other resource on earth. Start small. Show yourself that you can give yourself one command and one follow through. Hey man, lately I've been in a funk. I feel like everything is slipping. I feel like I'm not where I should be, like I'm not who I'm meant to be. I'm seeing all these other people getting ahead and I'm here feeling like I'm running without ever really moving forwards. I'm on this continuous conveyor belt stuck in no man's land, stuck in limbo. And I'm tired. This isn't where I was meant to be or who I was supposed to be. And, and the deepest feeling that I have is why? Why am I still here? But in all of that frustration, and in the friction of that pain, a deep, dark part of me speaks and says, is that the best you've got? Have you genuinely given it your all? Did you truly go all chips in? And to be honest, to be really honest with you, a quiet, shameful voice is whispering, no, no, I haven't. Our society celebrates conquerors and shame surrender, but what if I told you surrender can actually be a powerful, empowering thing? What if by surrendering we actually find acceptance 
And in that acceptance, we become the conquerors that we're seeking. Now, I'm not talking about giving up. Let me be clear. I'm talking about the kind of surrender that is about surrendering to the process, surrendering to the work, the art, the art of being studious. Vedic philosophy talks about this, that when a man sets aside his pride and he abandons his ego, only then can he truly begin with earnestness, the journey of self-development and spiritual growth. In other words, when you reach your lowest point, we become opened to the greatest change. I'm not surprised that I am where I am. And you shouldn't be surprised you're getting the results you're getting. Because what worked for you then, it's not going to work for you now. And amongst the darkness and demons of doubt, what you and I, what we need to realize is that we are social machines built but also programmed to repeat patterns. And in the early days, these new patterns that we find or adopt, they bring us the excitement of new results. When you do something new, it gives you a new fix, a new result. But over time, these things decay. And it's your job to keep continually defining yourself, to abandon and then enlighten our old selves. The shedding of one shell into the next and the next and the next for lifetimes. The only constant in all of this is that things are impermanent. So don't hold on to what is. Life is like a river and the waters that are still that you are trying to hold on to are the same waters that crash and swirl around you. So change, change. And if you want to win, if you want to succeed, if you want to go beyond this, the choice isn't to exit, it's to engage. You need to sit down and have an honest conversation with yourself about the kind of life you want to live, the kind of human being that you want to be, the sacrifice and investment that you are going to have to make in order to get there. And above all else, above all else, what are the things that you are going to personally get fulfillment from? So stay away from social media for a time if you need to. Focus on the goal, focus on the mission, Focus on the vision. Don't chase things because you think it might mean that people rate you more. I want you to rate you more. I want you to do it for you and nobody else because that's what real success is. That's a real like. Not the kind that you get from your feed, but the kind that you get from the beating of your own heart, your own drum. And remember, it's okay not to know or to have it all figured out. You don't need a grand map of your reality and your future. Your path, it's made by walking it. So take it one step at a time. Take it one moment at a time. Have micro goals. Sometimes in life you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you just gotta keep moving forward. And I promise you, you will come to a better place. Self-mastery. Power begins from within. If you're aware of who you are, if you're aware of what you're good at, what you're not good at, if you're able to see how emotions kind of govern your life, if you can learn what your weaknesses are and how to control them, you can't ever get complete control, but awareness is almost enough. Slowly through this process of knowing who you are and understanding other people and how they operate so you don't make stupid mistakes in life, you can increase that little tiny margin more and more and more and you will be a person of power. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into a certain groups, certain frats, certain sororities, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure. Because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure. We've all failed at things. I'm gonna to continue to fail at stuff. It's the most powerful tool you can use, but it all depends on how you use it. A scalpel in the hands of an individual, it can do unbelievable damage. In the hands of a professional, of a doctor, it saves lives. So it's the same thing with failure. It's how you use it. 
It's that drive inside of you. It's what we talk about, the dark side. The dark side is filled with failure, but it's the fuel that burns you like something that's never burned inside you before. And on some days, you gotta just listen to your soul. And you gotta say, I'm gonna leap, I'm gonna get to the edge. Most people are at the edge, and you're standing at the edge, and you're watching everyone else fly. That's pit my ride, watch my crib, all this stuff. You know, watching people's lives on Facebook. You're at the edge, watching someone else live, wondering what it's gonna be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Because only three things can happen. You're either gonna jump and fly, or you're gonna jump and fall on something soft. Are you gonna fall down hard? Either way, you're gonna get back up. You already know you got what it takes to get back up. Your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly, that you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are, before they really get your fingerprint, before they really get your contribution, before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't wanna leave this place without us knowing you were here. There's a process. The process begins by first knowing what you really love. And believe me, a lot of people have no self-awareness. They don't even really know what it is that they were meant to do in life. They loved music when they were a kid, but then they got into law or whatever because of their parents, and then they don't know who they are anymore. Well, do I really like music? You gotta go through that process first of figuring out what it is that really connects to you in a deep, visceral way, what you loved when you were a kid, what still excites you. Once you go through that and you understand it and you've got some clarity about it, okay, how do I incorporate that in my life? What makes people different is a flip in their fucking mindset. All those things that happen to you in your life, all those bad things, all those things that you blame other people for, they're now yours to own. You gotta figure out a way to reprogram your mind to get outside the box. A lot of people will listen to this and they'll be motivated, they'll be fired up. They'll be so fired up it's not even funny. Motivation is just kindling. It starts to fire. But that kindling, once one raindrop hits that little kindling, it's burnt out. But it has to be something that's deep down inside. So motivation is like this. If you're married and your wife is okay and your bills are paid and the kids are good and the dog's good. If everything is good, you can find some motivation because why your life is happy. It's that motherfucker that wakes up in the sewer every fucking day, has nothing to fucking go home to, has nothing. Bills aren't paid, doesn't know when the fucking next meal's coming, doesn't know shit, and still says, fuck it. I am going to do what I have to do to get to where the fuck I have to go. That's the difference between motivation and drive, and then soon, obsession. Obsession makes a person, makes other people, like, so when you're around somebody that's obsessed, most people don't have any fucking idea what to call you. So they call you crazy. They call you crazy because they don't understand where you're trying to go. Right. What the fuck you're trying to do, what you're trying to be. So to the normal person, which we're all normal, we're all very normal, once they turn that mindset to a point where they no longer want to be so-called normal, that's when you start to find out that motivation is not enough. It's not enough. You have to be that person who no matter what's going on, if you're a big time runner, you don't care what temperature is. Like a whole bunch of people I run with, guess what they do every morning, every night, they look to see what the fucking temperature is going to be tomorrow. Right. What's the temperature going to be? So I am I going to run inside or run outside? A person that's obsessed and wants to just get there, they don't give a fuck what the temperature is. They no longer care, because they know no matter what's out there, no matter if it's snowing, if it's, if, if it's a damn tropical storm, if it's 220 below, they're gonna run. They don't care. So there's no need to waste the time to look. I'm just gonna go. And that's how you wanna get your mind. I don't, it doesn't matter what the fuck's out there, what's in front of me. Because a motivated person is going to look. Because that weather is going to fucking change their motivation. Up or down. Oh, it's 70 and sunny. I'm motivated. Oh, it's 30 and a blizzard. Fuck that. I'm going to go inside. An obsessed person doesn't care. They get the fucking job done. When I was in hell, I wasn't able, I wasn't able to be in hell and be calm. 
Hell makes you anxious. Hell makes you want to get out of it. It's that person who has the ability to be in hell and think very calmly, very rationally about what the hell is going on. What's the truth? What's the reality? Why is my dad this way? Why are these kids calling me nigger? Why, why, why? You have to be able to piece people apart. Take it down, dissect it, and see what's going on. So back then, I didn't have no skills. I had no skills. All I saw was a whole bunch of kids like me, but I no longer saw that. All I saw was the spray painting on my car, me being called nigger. That's all I saw. My lens was this big. It was very small, very small fucking lens, when now my lens is very, it's huge. I see everybody for who they are and what they are. So that's, that's the one thing that changed in me was my reality. We always paint a fucked up reality that's not even true. It's reality what we think is true because our lives aren't what we want it to be. I realized that God wasn't gonna give me a get out of jail free card. And from the time I was born into the time I was 19 years old, my life had these hurdles. I constantly hit obstacles. Obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. And I, I had to figure out how to manage suffering, how to, how, like, how to deal with it, because it'd be part of my life forever. At least that's what I thought. So in order to deal with it, I had to be able to conquer it and overcome it and deal with it and know that in this suffering, there has to be some kind of growth. With every obstacle, I look at it as friction now. Without friction, there is no growth. You have to have friction in your life to grow. So I start looking at all these different things versus the woe is me mentality. Like, oh my God, look at my life. My life's so fucked up. I come from this fucked up family. I'm being beaten. I'm, I'm being abused mentally, physically. I start looking at it as, a, as the perfect trial ground. So I had to flip it upside down. I said, okay, I'm suffering tremendously, mentally. Use this to your advantage versus your disadvantage. So that's what I did. Versus looking at it as like, oh my God, what was me? I'm never gonna get out of here. I looked at it as, okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. If I can overcome this, if I can find some power in this, some way to get through this, that right there would be the fuel for the rest of my life. And so I found great strength in suffering. Great strength in it because why? Through all of that, it started to callous my mind over the victim's mentality. You have to recognize what you've gone through. And that right there gave me pride. I realized that very few people could turn upside down what I did. I was able to turn upside down every negative thing in my life, everything, and use it for power. Because on the other end of suffering is greatness. It's not over here. So a whole bunch of us, we put ourselves in this great box. And in that box, there's no suffering in it. So what we do is we, is, we, is we shelter ourselves from greatness. So for me, for instance, I was 300 damn pounds at one time in my life. Sprayed for cockroaches, made a thousand dollars a month. I was living in that box. I would sometimes look over the box and I saw hell, suffering, storms, avalanches, tornadoes. I don't wanna go over there, but I knew if I can get through that shit mentally, on the other side was a 185 pound person who's a Navy SEAL, went through Ranger School. Only person to do this, only person to do that, only person to do this. But that's through all of that shit. All that shit I have to go through. So, so, so you peek over the box and you go back in and say, oh, I'm okay being 300 pounds, making thousand dollars a month. I'm okay over here. Because that hurdle is suffering. It's suffering. And when you're willing to go past suffering and see that suffering is one of the best ways you can grow, that you can overcome, because you can suffer for the long term. You can suffer slowly, or you can go through pain and then experience what's on the other side. Now the other side is where you start to really start your journey. People think they start their journey because they're born. No, there's a lot of people in graves who have lived a hundred years and have never started their real journey. Your real journey starts when you go outside that box and you start climbing mountains. You start climbing mountains. And you think you're at the top of the mountain, you go down the other side of it, you think I'm here, and you look up, fuck, there's another fucking mountain. And it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. And just when you're getting ready to quit, you crest that final mountain, you get down and you look, and there you are. And it starts to make sense to you then. Does it make sense to you? until you get outside that fucking box. I'll talk to so many fucking people 
And what I say is not for everybody. So many people don't have any clue on what the fuck I'm saying because they're in this box. And it's their brain. The mind's a very powerful thing. It has a tactical advantage over you all the time. It knows your fears. It knows your insecurities. It knows where you don't want to go. So it will guide you away from that. And that's why the mind will always win until you reprogram it. It will always win until you fucking reprogram it.